Good morning, my fellow Americans. Hey, is this Russian invading Ukrainian thing giving you a feeling of deja vu? It's almost like the last time we had a Democratic president in office, Obama. Why, Russia bit off a little bit of the Ukraine. It only took Crimea. Russia put its hand in the cookie jar, grabbed some cookies, and went, Oh, that is sweet. But then, President Trump came in office. He put the lid on the cookie jar. He spanked Russia's hand and he says, You stay away from those damn cookies. But, now that we have old crazy lazy Joe in office, well, Russia remembers how sweet those cookies were. Lazy Crazy Joe even took the lid off the cookie jar for him. Is it any wonder that Putin has put his hands back in that cookie jar? So, if you have a garbled, warped, muddled feeling about what's going on here, remember this. The Ukraine used to be part of the Russian Empire. Do you remember Chernobyl? That's a Russian-built reactor. And guess what? The Russians have apparently bombed the place, and there's a radioactive cloud spewing across Europe as I speak. Now, I don't think the U.S. should get involved. Hell, it's way too late for that. I don't even think the U.S. should give any sanctions to Russia. Here's what I think we should do. Let's take a historical view on this. You know, going back to our own Civil War. Now, the French and the British, they didn't get involved in our Civil War. We shouldn't get involved in Russia's meddling in Ukraine. It's almost the same thing. It's almost a Civil War there. What the French and British did, though, said... Hey, as long as you've got the gold, we'll sell you weapons. And so, the southern states, they shipped over cotton and gold and everything that was worth a dime over to England and France, and they got weapons. They bought a lot of weapons. We should do the same. And I don't even mean to Ukraine. It's far too late for that. By the time Ukraine even thought about buying weapons, the shooting's going to be all over, and the Ukraine is either going to be fully under Russian control or however large a chunk of it Russia wants. No, what we should do, though, is say, hey, Baltic states, yeah, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, you see what happened over there to the Ukraine? That could happen to you, too. You know what you really need? You need a bunch of weapons. Especially expensive weapons like our Patriot Missile Defense System. You should buy a lot of that. Any country that used to be a part of the Russian Empire might soon be a part of it again. And, well, we don't want to get into a shooting war with Russia, but we could damn sure sell these countries... You know, a stick to warn Russia off with. Now, let's get on a little bit with this story. There's a reason I brought it up. This is from Newsweek. Take a look at the headline. China refuses to call Russia's war on Ukraine an invasion. Well, they did more than that. But we're going to have to go to a British news source to find out just how bad it is. Let's first take a look at how the U.S. News and Newsweek report what China said. At a press conference in Beijing, China's assistant foreign minister, Hui Chunying, took issue with what she called typical Western framing of the situation after a reporter had used the term invasion. China would not rush into a conclusion, she said. 
Actually, she said more than that. But you can't find it in the U.S. news sources. Let's go over to a British news source. This is the Independent. Take a look at this headline. China refuses to accept Russia has invaded Ukraine and blames U.S. for fanning the flames of war. There you go. China, Winnie the Pooh, not only says that this isn't really an invasion, but that the U.S. is fanning the flames of war. Now, both these articles are extremely short. Let's get down to what China said. China has rejected labeling Russia's military action in Ukraine an invasion and has instead blamed the U.S. for hyping up the prospect of war in Eastern Europe amid global condemnation of Moscow's offensive on Kiev. Now, why is China so busy protecting Russia, it's not like they're the tightest of allies. They're both communist countries, but they've diverged along the way. They really have very little in common. If you remember, in fact, Russia built a gas pipeline into China on an agreed-upon price. After the pipeline was built, the Putin came into China, and the Chinese said, you know what, the price that we agreed to is too much. Here's what we can afford to pay. And they gave Russia an ultimatum. Either we buy the gas at this price, or you can take your pipeline and shove it. <laughs> to Russia's credit, although they had to accept the lower price, Putin got on an airplane and left. He wasn't happy at all about that. So, China will stiff anybody. So, why is China really defending Russia? Could it be this? Let's go back to Newsweek. Today, Ukraine. Tomorrow, Taiwan. Americans fear China will copy Russia. Yeah, there's a big difference between Russia and invading Ukraine and China invading Taiwan. You see, Taiwan, for one thing, actually has a democratically elected government, unlike Russia or China, where you either vote for who the communists tell you to, or you get thrown in jail. In Taiwan, they actually give you a choice. On top of which, we have long historical ties with Taiwan. We used to have a number of military bases there. We should either reactivate the bases we used to have there or build new ones. I'm pretty sure we could talk Taiwan into either entirely funding the cost of the new bases or partially funding the cost of the new bases because with a bunch of boots on the ground, American boots on the ground, China's very unlikely to start a shooting war with Taiwan. Taiwanese can be good friends to the U.S. Ukraine, not so much. Taiwan has a democratically elected government. Ukraine, no, they don't know anything about democracy. So, China might be considering invading Taiwan. It might be the reason they're so vociferous on defending Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. We can't do anything to stop Russia's invasion of the Ukraine now, but we can stop them from chewing up the Baltic states by, like, selling them extra weapons and stuff like that, and I think we should sell all the weapons to Taiwan that they can afford. Taiwan has been waving the fickle finger of fate at China for a very long time, and with just a little bit of help, it can continue to do so.